Uh, later in the day at the estuary, um, had some, had a nice time. Uh, I think years and years ago, I used to have an altar at home, and I ended up bringing way too many stones and twigs home. You know, it doesn't even seem like it means anything at the end of the day. Anything that you've got to eventually just hurl and get rid of never seemed to be sit quite right with me. And now, as I walk around in nature, I can pick up stones. I can leave them here. I can leave them there. I can build an altar. I can. I, I uh, put picking up and putting down a stone here makes me think of years from now because I, I it opens up the concept of what will that stone mean to me days from now, little years from now, and um, but like a, a small diminutive monument, it may indeed be any stone that I place around the places that I go may be there years from now. That's an interesting concept. Years from now. Uh, who among us uh, cannot look at years from now and say, look, I, I like some parts of my life that might change years and years from now. It's, it's not something you, you can really wrap your mind around completely because, I don't know about you, but I mean, I, I've never felt I could actually predict and in some sense I didn't want to think about it. I mean, what if I'm alone still years from now? Uh, when or if my mom passes away, um, which is the kind of the last living connection to family that I have, and uh, I, I have no choice. I have to prepare for precisely that, that I will be no other family in my life unless I make a very good match in a woman, and um, uh, that's something that I'm, I'm working on. <laughs> I'm uh, definitely feeling I'm moving into another mode that way, and it's a good time to move into that mode. I think my life uh, demands me moving a little bit more into a mode of seeing the need and the desire for that um, and recognizing it um, and, and looking at life that way so it can inform my thoughts more so that I can um, get more in, and, and also I think just there's a natural cycle I think it's the right time for that for me and I've been very very aware of that um, particularly as we move into the next uh, two or three months of the year, this has been a, this is a glory time for me because I've been seeing the closing of this cycle for some time, and in the opening up of the new year, of uh, certainly being able to make strides and exercise an active component of my will that uh, doesn't need to totally immerse itself in so much as our nervous systems can be immersed in just just dealing with things, you know, trying to get on a good footing in some fundamental ways, because I've had relationships that, nice as they are, they, they really tend to undermine my foundations in life and my, my sense of my principles and how secure I want to be if I'm going to be with someone uh, in a way where our security becomes related to each other. So it's a very big project for me, probably for a lot of people, especially if you come from an alcoholic family, you come from a disadvantaged uh what well, doesn't mean that you're at a disadvantage any more than anyone else but those of you who know know what i mean um it's okay to be intelligent enough to know that there were lapses um in your in the provisions that should have been made for your mind and it's okay to have objections about that it, it for not everybody necessarily but for many people might be a good idea to criticize your childhood whether you liked it or not and uh but frankly, how you feel about what you will discover will tell the tale. And at the end of the day, you need to know for sure, like, how good was it? And, and how you feel about examining it will tell the tale. And that something might feel difficult to think about doesn't mean that it's all wrong. And, and that something was really wonderful doesn't mean that it wasn't wrong. In fact, it's a good idea that something's always a bit wrong because life has to change and grow. Um, you know, no part of life is ever adequate for life. Uh, the autumn doesn't solve all of spring's problems. Um, there needs to be a winter and a spring. And, uh, and uh, a problem isn't, uh, doesn't exclude natural challenges, uh, natural kinds of hunger and deprivation um, that may need to be suffered on a fairly regular basis. And so much, uh, but I think there are definitely ways of finding our own place with how, how much, how uncomfortable we need to make uh, accommodate and how uncomfortable we want to at least move towards no longer accommodating in our life and sometimes if you're really getting into your life that means you have to learn things from the most difficult things and you have to learn some difficult lessons from difficult things if you're going to 
be someone who doesn't have to accommodate that type of thing in their life. You know, and uh, things that need to happen, things that happen, things that shouldn't have happened, and just everything that happens in the course of life. And maybe it's all taken up in the chorus of life, and maybe we should quite rely upon it if we if we hope to make way that our instincts and our endurance, that everything added up doesn't always add up to a psychopathic society, and that has some force and sway, as it should, among all the things that speak to our better angels to our high hearts and uh, or our better angels with sex organs I think some of the best stories of my life I quite rely upon will will be the stories about people <laughs> not for no far removed from at least the people that I actually know the acts of compassion the acts of love I don't know about gurus and things like that I don't know if I want to rely upon Either what they say about themselves or what anyone says about them. I don't know, do you trust someone who would let people think of you as a god? Are you, would you uh, be comfortable with that? No, that all that makes the mind blissful is good, in so much as not all that glitters is gold. And, uh... If you're uncomfortable with that fact, that's good. That's healthy. That our any of our even our greatest sense of bliss or perspective bliss should fall under any scrutiny is a difficult thing, but we can either scrutinize it ourselves or we can try it out on others and see what happens and I don't know. I'm, for me, I've spent a lot of time working with philosophy. I don't think I would sell my philosophy. I don't think I would say that someone definitely should rely upon it. I can barely rely upon myself from day to day. I don't. I feel quite reckless in my life. It's so simple and easy it is, in a sense, for me to avoid many of the trappings of civilization, and yet too easy it may be. Too reckless, in a way, that I should deprive myself of the relative comforts of my fellow man. That I should have sustained such passions or aptitudes which afford so little of the company of my brothers and sisters that we could make a goodly company indeed well I guess it comes down to desire I want to make the goodly company of one particular person uh, upon whom I might rely to uh, exceed all of my expectations in life and to find myself in the position to have correctly undertaken an opportunity offered me by many, many years of my life um, of uh, things I've intuited and anticipated in my philosophy about the nature of creative intelligence and uh, a kind of undertaking that I have felt and experienced and talked about as I have practiced to purify where I think it is my job to purify myself and to listen to whatever messages I can to honor and to clarify um, how best to live my life and how best to open my life up to all the possibilities um, that can come to people um, as they just sustain they sustain the path that they are on and they wait for the right time We don't push it, because ultimately in taking this guidance that you would take from almost a divine mind of nature, you're really taking the kind of guidance that you can get by trusting the delicate little gimbal of yourself, tossed in turn though it may be. It is afforded some great power to wait, to anticipate, and to make the most of the situations we find ourselves in, and if that's not an if that's not a significantly enough holy statement, or if it's not a totally scientific or medical statement, if you couldn't rely upon that to pay your bills or to comfort your pains, that may be true, but it nonetheless remains, I think, quite a substantial offering, in so much as we ever have need of hearing some, if symbolic, representation of types of things we all go through in life. 
from someone who just never went down a road that said, I have to be a fucking professional at something. You know, I don't want to learn to talk like someone whose mind is, is only known to be uh, worth listening to because it has a commercial value. <laughs> I, I have to laugh and chuckle uh, that uh, intelligent people allow their minds to be used in commercial activities uh, because that's not what a mind is for. You know, it, it severely degrades its capacities when it's used in commerce. I, I can't imagine using my mind in a commercial activity. I find myself, like, almost losing consciousness during commercial activities. I just, like, oh, having to hold that chain. I've talked to, like, nice men and women. I'm talking to them to have to exchange money and bills and count out your change and all that shit. It just seems like, why are we doing this? Why is there any financial interaction involved with this? And I know that doesn't totally make sense, and I know that doesn't necessarily sound rational, but I trust my instincts. That there could be a total pole shift in what we value and how the current of our life actually flows, and it could flow more freely, perhaps, without what we understand money to be. And if it did, and if people had more time and their thinking changed, I think they would get a lot more out of talking with me. I know that for a fact. I don't think uh, people can go where I might want to go with them and find them and lose them and, and, and who knows, let them, let them be. I can't imagine uh, the changes that have gone on in people's minds as they've lived in this world. And, and no, I don't get some sick pleasure in imagining that people are all delicately and, de and then delicately traumatized and that I am blessed and cursed with some particular desire to see the warts which people invariably exhibit under all the various stresses which they undertake when they undertake to live their lives and work their jobs. And maybe I, I do take among all the all the reckless risks of my life, the risk of being completely obsolete and uh, irrelevant to my society. And, uh, but I'm used to that, <laughs> see, because I have found quite, quite only that distinction, really, among my peers or among uh, the company that I have kept. Um, so I'm, I have no danger of any expectations of anything more than that. I just find myself... Um, almost asked by the surrounding society to go spend time and talk to yourself because we can't give you the, we can't give ourselves the opportunity to interact with you at that level and uh, and so uh, you know bless you and, and go and talk to yourself somewhere you know keep keep those faculties moving pretend we can hear you and that's what I've done in my writing and my journaling because that was my relationship to my family all my life and I don't, as you can hear in my voice, you know, I don't think there's, I don't know what you would hear as far as emotion. I feel a little blank as I say it, but just something I don't mind laying out there. And it's, it's almost like, a, I don't know, like a set of conditions that I might be agreeing to. And it's like, because certainly my perception is being added to that and coloring all these relationships, that's to be sure. Um, but I've also had an extraordinary time to study patterns of relationship and, uh, I also trust what's natural between people, and as I grew up, I understood that it wasn't really natural for people to want to get to know me very much. Uh, I've noticed that there's a strong tendency among people whose psychological aptitudes are more nearly approximate my own, that people tend to take on certain roles and call themselves healers and like human design cult. And uh, One very nice narcissist who I see at this park was saying how you know, she felt uh, life was very difficult for her. And, she just listened to life coaches and started repeating the phrases they used, almost like magical phrases, that in a way would uh, maximize the commercial use of her time uh, when she was interacting with other people and minimize um, the non-commercially viable time that she would have to care about people or involve themselves in herself in their lives. And uh, To be fair, I mean, uh, she works with people and it's very easy to overextend yourself. 
But I just, I offer that as an example of, I mean, she used life coaching. She just said, I looked at life coaches and da 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 and these are the words they use, and this helps me keep people away from me. And I thought, well, that's what religion's for. It's to keep people away from you and to make the, uh, the only activity, the, the activities or functionality to which you re automatically reduce any relationship to me as commercially viable as possible for you or the religion you represent as an actor, believer, worker, and soldier. So she offered me an opportunity to create another sort of cybernetic algorithm by a well, representation of, of a cybernetic algorithm. Something's happening at a mental, physical, sociological level that changes the metrics of what people want to offer and what they're getting and the conditions in which they're making those types of decisions so that lots of similar types of decisions are continually being made and rewarded. And when you find what is rewarding in life quite often under these conditions, you're finding what's your version of narcissism. And people live behind that veil all of their lives. And that's part of taking on professional qualifications because, not to say anything bad about any one particular occupation, but I, mean, I think a lot of the types of decisions and things people are subjected to and the, uh, the amount of tribute, in other words, the amount of, that your labor is actually given away, in fact, you're just renting it back, um, the types of conditions that are changed beyond your notice, but not beyond your will, in as much as you're given every opportunity to lie to yourself and to give up uh, noticing probably feelings you've had in your body when it comes to working and paying taxes and uh, working as much as you do and just living and working under various conditions, some of which are helpful but most of which generally tend to detract from the most vital conversion of your industry into what it's probably actually worth uh, in, the, in the checks and balances of the world in any world worthy of so much of your labor. And so, in as much as the, the social contract appears legitimate, it certainly is indispensable and imperative, socially and as far as we know biologically, um, it is, is nonetheless has buried within it some, some very problematic things that almost invalidate it. And it may just happen to be that there are people like myself or parts of people's lives, maybe even only when they're young, where they just have a hard time swallowing it. And isn't it good if we just have some people scattered around our lives, even if I'm just a random little flower scattered on the winds of the internet, that uh, don't mind taking a little time and uh, know the benefits of emotions and the benefits of finding, if you can, um, some poise. Um, use your mind. Make it work for you. Um, find as much pleasure as you can in life without avoiding the, the difficult facts about life. Um, Chances are, if you, even if you're uncomfortable a lot of the time, you're, you're doing something invaluable. Um, and uh, you have that either way. And you should definitely do what you need to do as safely as you can do it to have shelter and food. And if you can work in relationships that, that don't, uh, don't break your heart on a regular basis, um, great. And if you can't, um, some good dimension of what everything that you will ever call or feel is your life will be about finding a better position, honoring where you were and with whom you were, and, and finding a better position that, far as it may take you from, uh, as clo uh, close as it may restore you to all that is good and great in all and all whom you have ever truly loved, and upon whom you most truly, truly uh, um, and justifiably relied upon and uh, whom you trusted. And as a flesh and blood being, you have needs that to me are like laws. And if they are deprived, it doesn't matter what I think, it doesn't matter what I like or dislike, there is going to be a way that you and billions like you are going to find those needs illuminated, respected, dignified, and met. And no matter what we do and call civilization, is not going to change. People will do whatever they can to meet those needs. And it's in our interest, whether you're a person like me or not, to discover those needs and uh, to discover the force and the intelligence offered to those who, um, who determine to walk and live a certain way that they can get their brain working in a way while satisfactory to them in many respects shall ever remain uh, beyond the pale of, of what is typically considered socially rewarding and even uh, normal behavior. Thanks for listening.